So we will start this evening with Cheryl, and I'd like us all to please give a very, very warm Zoom welcome to both poets. Thank you, this is so exciting. Uh, thank you, Catherine and Marianne. Thank you, family, community, mothers and friends. Thank you so much, Kathy, for agreeing to read with me. I'm very excited to be here. I'm going to begin with a poem that I wrote for Kathy. And after that, Kathy and I will each read um, two of our poems from our books. And then we'll go into um, our own reading. And this piece is called The Grand Days of Noho Star, which was a fabulous restaurant in Noho that I, I, miss, I miss it. It closed and wow, I can't believe it. So um, I, had, I knew Kathy from her performances around the city, but um, we weren't really friends yet. But on this particular night, I had come from one of her readings, maybe just a week before. And there she was in a NoHo stall with her beautiful daughters. And I, something she had said really touched me in, in one of her poems. And I went up and spoke to her. And so that our friendship began that night. Dear Kathy, I miss our poetry brunches at NoHo Star. Our talks on MFA programs, children, spouses, mothers, manuscripts, submission guidelines. I miss our San Pellegrino flat or bubbly, radish onions and avocado salad. At NoHo Star, we enjoyed fried onions in its spicy mango chutney. It was there that I tried Blue Moon Bear for the first time with two orange slices. She gave me not one, but two orange slices. And who ever heard of Mexican pizza with a raw egg on top or fried shrimp with garlic eggplant? Only no whole star. On other dates, a white eight-seater bench on Lafayette near the window held our joy after readings, after classes, after book launches, where we sat for hours sipping drinks and laughing loud, cold in summer, cold in winter. Then that time the clumsy white boy spilled deep red Chilean wine on my new suede jacket on my mother's beige antique hat. Golda had me, held me back, I almost killed him because he refused to give his name and hid in the kitchen rather than apologize. It was at NoHo Star that fall Saturday evening that I fell in love with Kathy Engel and her two beautiful daughters. We set out on a journey of writing poetry and keeping each other's secrets. I think of you, Noho, and Kathy, every time I order garlic eggplant and curry fries from the bodega near my corner in Brooklyn. Welcome, Kathy. I'm just gonna cry and you can read some more, okay? <laughs> uh, thank you, Cheryl. Um, when, that, when you sent me that poem, I just kind of like, when was it, a, a year ago or something? I don't even time. Yeah, I think it was a year ago. I'm very confused now. But uh, I just, just kept uh, reading it again and again and again. <laughs> Um, thank you for um, inviting me to share this reading uh, and this launch for, because it's Zoom for anyone, but very particularly for our East End community who has grown to know and love you. And um, really also thanks to Canios, to Catherine and Marianne who are so welcoming and make 
a gathering place and a home for, for us and our work and, and our ideas and just continue no matter what. You know, we have to be outside, we have to have virtual things. And so thank you so much. Um, I want to acknowledge that uh, I'm in a place called Sagaponic, where I actually grew up, although I'm growing up now more. But um, it is uh, the land, the sacred lands of the Montaukett, Shinnecock, and Manahasset peoples and uh, the original caretakers of this land. And I wanna honor the elders past, present and future and pledge to continue to work for sovereignty. And I encourage and invite you to put in the chat uh, where you are, if, you, if you're so uh, inclined. Um, I'm going to read two of Cheryl's poems from this extraordinary book. And um, the first is called Stone. This is the book. Can you see it? Yes. And thank you for letting me read your poems. It's an incredible experience. Stone. That first night after you left, I saw God's face and wept bitterly. The second night God offered a prayer. I screamed that prayer away. The third night God reached out his hand I chewed on it until it became dust. On the fourth night, my tears became stone that filled in for eyes. Six months later, when they broke my heart open, there was not much, just cloves and blue leaves. <clears throat> this is Malik the Beautiful. Malik the beautiful, bless the soot of your skin. Someday the moon will envy your carnelian eyes. May rain water sprout garnets in your hair. Someday I will learn to live without you, love. May rivers sing your songs ever so sweetly. May she keep you company, dancing softly side by side. Then the luscious sound a sequoia returning. Thank you. Thank you. Very beautiful, Kathy. Thank you. I had to hold on to my chair tight. The first poem I'm going to read by Kathy is simply titled A. Again, the horse leads me to water. She steps over stones like a ballerina, breathes hot air into my waiting face. She stomps, curls her brown slender leg, scuffs the ground with stripe hoof the way I want to. Instinctively, I look for you, brother who led us both, girl and horse, brown hair swishing, lead shank in one hand, Coca-Cola in the other. Only a rifle then for duck hunting. He's gone, I say, over and over aloud, the horse throws her head back, leads me again to water. And this one is instructions to my father on what would have been your 86th birthday. One, 
Let id and super ego waltz like Fred and Ginger, or tumble forward, huffin and puffin one behind the other, piglet and pool, or let them fight. Two, come back into the house near the sea where you sat frozen just after we moved, staring at the high arched windows. Now open your arms and bless us. Three, forgive your mother for needing you too much. My mother for not needing you. Me for growing. Forgive yourself. Four, make that film the one in which you are the protagonist, free to land. Don't split, don't splice the bad parts, sail. Don't splice the bad parts, sail. Thank you, Cheryl. <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to read a few poems now. Um, and I just want to say that uh, the loss, Cheryl and I are in a writing circle together that she started. And um, it's, it's one of the, it's one of the things that keeps me going all the time. And for that, I am ever grateful. And when I first wrote the sequence that is the Lost Brother Alphabet, and those poems are now are integrated, woven through this book called The Lost Brother Alphabet, Cheryl, uh, you were one of the very first people who saw those poems. And I think maybe you were visiting and I left it by your bed or something, but <laughs> you were one of the very first people and you pushed me and lovingly pushed me and supported me as you always have. And um, I am always grateful every day for our friendship and our sister. Oh, thank you. I wanna thank Get Fresh Books. It's really hard to make a small independent press. And I wanna thank Philippe Cheng because the art on a book's cover is what invites you in. And his art is on my cover. Um, the first book the poem I'm going to read is for Cheryl, of course. It's called The Body I Write For, and um, it's from a prompt she offered at a workshop she gave on the form Zuhitsu. There's a reference to Leo Tolstoy's Anna Karenina in it. The body I write for is singular and plural, wants to watch a whale for hours without reason, Slick, mysterious, blue-black rise and drop. Listen to its lone eternal horn, haunting ocean archive. The smooth, tan skin of crepe myrtle, barely alive after first wind, blooms now. Cone-shaped lanterns of crinkly pink or white petals dangling from antlers of bark, rooted near enough snow bell Kusa dogwood and mimosa to share a village of mycelium. The body is daughter and mother, lover and lover, wave and particle, track and train hovering around the bend with its death eye, long moan and grammar of loss. She talks to Tolstoy's ma, Anna. Don't leap, she calls back into the story. Love yourself more than vanquished desire for a man, pride having broken his horse's back beneath him. The child body traveled by train. At Babylon, the wheels rode. She rode a metaphor of missing. Dear Cheryl, thank you for asking me to write who is the body I write for. Is this Suhitsu? I'm trying to fit into the name of something. I'm learning to write for the decimated bodies offered again and again by feline cohabitants, mouse haunch, 
rabbit leg, pierced vole, knowing it is loyalty that brings these body parts. Still, I battle squeamishness and the limitations of a gentrified, bifurcated mind. Is the body the one writing or the body written for or to, or does it matter? The body is indebted to generations of bodies whose names I haven't learned, embracing a multitude of languages and places, often afraid to leave home. The writing body knows she must write the body more honestly. The white she lives is not a true color, but its weight is undeniable, and if not interrupted, will continue to kill. If not interrupted, will continue to kill. The inaccuracy of how light moves, the inaccuracy of scale, the inaccuracy of a body to know another body, the inaccuracy of love, the body is in the end itself craving redemption. <clears throat> this is I from the Lost Brother Alphabet. Each poem from that sequence has a, a title that's a letter. And um, the, the sequence is, are, they are elegies, the poems for my brother who took his life in 2011. Inside you're insatiable, inside your instant gratification, inside your chocolate yodels, inside your irritated knee, your itching sex, your illicit, inside, inside, inside the ink of you, the eye of you, the irrepressible, innermost inside there. Would you were invincible? Would you imagine the possible, the everyday, not inured, not invaded, irreconcilable? Was it involuntary inside the eye of you, inside? And this is more S, also from the lost brother. There's an S and this is more S. Still for you, I crave some, some, some sweet, not shifty, not shut, not shafted or shafting. That sea we soaked. I want to suck out your shame, the sour, the scary, the sold self. Salute your soul. I am your sister. Here is my salt. Too late the salve. And I'm going to read two newer poems. Um, this one. It's quite, is, I wrote this year, um, it's for a friend who is a teacher and artist and activist and a COVID long hauler. <clears throat> and he always says to me, poco a poco, when I'm impatient about things happening. Uh, so to a friend for Pato. All can be torn and can remain, both and. Still and still I hear way underneath tree root talk, how no distance is too far when it comes to care. All masked now, still unprotected. We may have shed the skin between certainty and a sky of asking. Let the mending be endless. Let the body be merciful and the merciful embodied wave after wave, poco a poco. Let the spirit of duende live somewhere in each of us. And tell me, friend, when you hold the ancient sea's conch hollow to your ear, what echo do you hear? And um, I'm gonna close with something so, so, so new. Um, which I'm not usually brave enough to do, but uh, I was listening to Michael Waters, the amazing poet earlier today, and I'm not Michael Waters, but he did inspire me to be brave. <laughs> um, 
And this is uh, for River, River and Theo, newly arrived. Uh, there is a reference to Vandana, and that's Vandana Shiva, the environmentalist activist and teacher from India. And the reference to ice flows, um, I'm, I'm working on a collaboration with the amazing artist Ellen Driscoll, and many of her images are with glaciers and ice flows. Both. It's the ice flows I can't stop thinking about. Cascade of endless blue and the lonely cold. And faces of grieving mothers, the thieving of children year after year, country after country. Tonight I pray especially for India and Colombia and here and here and here. Ache of separation knows no border or time zone. Vandana's seeds promise for every loss a planting. Today, against the backdrop of nonstop war, I sat on the floor with my daughter's closest friends, sisters, Carolina and Paula, their babies born just weeks apart. I rocked each in my Tia Kathy arms to sweet sleep, tiny frog legs, bellies softening, faces up toward whatever's there. And for that hour, listening to the beautiful mamas I knew as children, me telling early stories of my babies, their sisters, Ella and Jaja, time evaporated. Everything was once again possible. Each sudden twitch, skin smelling so new. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, Lovely, the new poems. I'm going to start my reading. I would be remiss if I didn't share a poem for my mother. Tomorrow being Mother's Day and everything. Uh, many of you know that I came to New York when I was 13 and left my mother in Trinidad. And um, she joined me a year later. And this poem is for the day that she joined me in New York. It's called Independence Day in more ways than one. Mom arrived in New York City a day before July 4th. One year since I last saw her. In her travel bag, a small red Bible, a handful of Kareilly bush for sugar diabetes and painful cramps, a susu book and a red solo. Later in bed, I hugged mommy tight, tight. We talked all night. Then she said, shine. I miss the roar of your big mouth most. Girl, I didn't tell plenty people I was going away, you know. I didn't want nobody to know I was going to New York. I didn't want them to put goat mouth on me and then I never reach America. We fell apart with crazy laughter and I knew I was home again. I will read a few poems from Mama Five Represents. At 19, his fish body sliced through the warm embroidery of my bloodline. I held my baby, the first one to touch his face. I was never alone. For years, I wore a baby on my hip, held my baby to my lips, I was never alone. That child with a shimmer and afro, oh, the secrets birth thighs keep, and damn the lessons hearts yield. I can't hold you now. I am alone, but not really alone. In the quiet of this night, I am missing you, child. 
the way a weight makes one out of breath. Sometimes I feel like the child left. Dear mom, today Malik is 11 months old. Yesterday he played baby Jesus in the manger. This is his first play. He slept almost through the entire thing. My friends, Linrod and Lisa, play Mary and Joseph. Mom, there is an actual old shed with real straw for the manger. I know we are growing something special here. Walt and Cheryl are proud parents. Still the sweetest words I ever heard. It's a compilation of my early mama years and my later mama years with Malik. My beloved grows right out of my own heart. How much more union can there be? That's by Rumi. Happy Mother's Day, mom. I made this picture for you, mom. Mom, grandma is my bestest friend ever. Mom, I'm coming home for your birthday. Mom, the album went gold. Be my date for the Grammys. Mom, I found this girl. She reminds me of you. Her name is Disha. I have a son. We have a son. His name is David. Mom, I love that little guy. Happy birthday, mommy. Thank you so much for my laptop. It is the best birthday present you ever gave me. I have been at home all weekend writing and making music. I swear, mom, I'll never leave the house again. Words light life's path. Big up, sister. Mom, I'm so happy, so happy. I'm getting married. Will you walk me down the aisle? Mom, I love you. Go on tour with me. You and Sini, move to California with me. You're getting kind of old. I mean, good old. And after Trayvon Martin's after Trayvon Martin's death, we were having a lot of conversation, Malik and I, and um, I was telling how angry I was and how I wanted life to be so beautiful and stay that way. And he wrote me a little note and he says, dear mom, do not wish for the body to become a pretty crimson azalea. Wish for the body to remain a weapon. The poets come to our home with sage, white candles and Florida water. They bring white calla lilies, my son's favorite flower. They bring drums, choras, and shaker. They make a joyful noise, form a prayer circle. Ilana leads us all in song. We hug each other. A laying on of hands. We howl and howl and pray together. I feel lifted like Hamatan, something close to lightning and sandstorm. I feel lifted like Hamatan. And this was a number of weeks after my son's funeral. And it's a cento, which a cento is a compilation, is fragments from a compilation of poems, my own poems. You lay on Annie's table, she is the massage therapist. This is where you and your daughter-in-law have brought your arms full of grief and doubt. Annie tells me, I will fix your sorrow, mama. Just cry, just cry, baby. You remind yourself that 
Tr truthfulness is an act of revolution. Let the body sing loud its sorrowful song. Good Lord, she was right. The richness that poured out of her fingers that day. How, dear God, she restored my energy. She sprinkled two handfuls of calendula and yarrow twigs in tepid water, washed my hands and feet. She put on South African drums, Miriam Makiba wailing in the background. Hugh Masakela thinks grazing in the grass is so easy. He does not know that there are bugs there. In the jug on the table, there's plum wine. The river sings, an angry mob grows. When this is over, when this is over, I will grow a tree out of my head, lightning bugs out of my eyes. The next time I see moon meandering lazy across the night, peeking in my window for her own gratification, I will tell her, bring my boy back, bring my boy back because his arms around my neck This is called Hand of the Midwife. And it's a poem I wrote for my grandmother because during, after my son passed, I realized that I was forgetting everything. And I became really afraid that I would forget his voice. I would forget the times we had together. And so I wrote, I was writing to God, to him, to my mother, to my grandmother. And so this is, a letter I wrote to my grandmother, hand of the midwife after grandma Ada. My grandmother was a village midwife, not certified, she delivered babies, shaped heads, broke fevers, flowed milk, buried umbilical cords and blue babies, a mix of raspberry leaves, clary sage, skull cap root, and blue cohosh. My grandmother's hands were a sure shot. It patched broken hearts, dried turmeric leaves to improve digestion, boiled tamarind leaves to treat jaundice and diabetes. It scrubbed and ironed until it was stiff and sore. Grandmother. What medicine plant can I boil for this wounding? And this is an email. <coughs> this is an email Malik wrote to me in 2008. There were times I would travel with him in the band when he went all over the world doing shows. And so he wrote this to me, August 2000. For the record, I just want you to know, mom, you are everything to me. I'm elated to have you as my mom. And as I grow older, I feel more and more like a mama's boy. Mom, only a few people affect me in a positive way by what they do say and how they live without being hypocritical. Although I didn't always do right in my younger years and sometimes made it almost impossible to cope with me, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for sticking with my hard headed ass, supporting my career I thank you for loving my wife and child and giving me sometimes crazy, insane advice. I love you unconditionally. I'm excited that you're coming to Denver. You may as well come with me to Seattle. Love, love, 
Malik. That that poem really gets me through the Mother's Day weekend. <laughs> and I will close with one more poem. And this poem is called Stitched. And uh, shortly after Malik passed away, I think it was the next year, I became ill and had to have a pacemaker put in. So then I, I, I wrote this poem, Stitched. I've stitched your breath to my throat, child. Did your last howl resemble mine? All day I want to sit in ashes. All the stars have followed after you. Since you've been gone, the left hand has betrayed me, has grown into my mother's. My index finger so crooked, it refuses to wash clean the dinner dishes. My eyes too are disobedient. I've told them not to tear at the wound of the name son. Does it listen? Did I say how lost I am? Your mom has a pacemaker, Malik. That rebuilt heart too makes promises. It will rescue me, will sing pretty, will rebuild the heave and steam of my body. Each night it takes a thigh, a breast, a begging skull, an arthritic knee. All around there are unhinged bones waiting at the lip of sea. Thank you. Those were some tough days. <laughs> I'm sure they were. Thank you both. Really extraordinary works and very moving. Thank you. We'd like those who might have questions to be able to ask. And um, two ways to do that, you could either type stack in the chat or use the raised hand icon so we can see you and otherwise let the words soak in for a, a moment is, is a good thing to do too. Well, while we're while you're thinking, I just will drop in the the chat again how you can actually purchase these books. I just you know want want to say once again, it's been you know it's been a long year uh, throughout this COVID pandemic, and for mm -hmm. writers who have had the uh, both the curse and the fortune to have published their work at this time, it, it's it's tough to sell them because they can't be in the stores. Um, it, it's really uh, creates a much more difficult calculus for them to reach their market and for people to be able to have their books, to read them and to share. So we wanna encourage you to you know, purchase the books. If you already have one, consider giving it to a friend. Um, so you can, we have both books at the store, come by anytime if you'd like. Uh, we also have a bookstore or a, a storefront on bookshop.org and Cheryl's book is there. So you could go on bookshop.org and purchase the book there. And actually any purchase that you made when, when you go through our link, um, we get credit for. Laura, do you have your hand up? Oh, I see, uh, yes, Laura and then Salim. Okay, and then I wanted to say something. Um, Laura, you, yeah, good, good. Uh, yes, 
Um, oh, thank you. Um, you guys are my sheroes. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. I, and um, I, I just want to say and share with you that um, this, these are pain, this is a painful weekend for me too. Yeah. And um, in, a, in, a, in a strange different way, but I was born on Mother's Day in 1960. So um, I don't know if I'm still a gift to my mother or, or a curse. I don't know yet, but um, <laughs> but the, your your poetry. But I I I'm definitely getting your book, Cheryl, because I'm you know you have a little niche on a shelf, and now I know I could put Kathy's book right next to yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm fighting grief, and I'm living in grief right now having to be a caretaker to my mother who has Alzheimer's and she didn't even remember my birthday today. Mm. So, I'm sorry. That's okay. How? <laughs> I, 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 I've got to get this on paper. I don't know how yet. <laughs> and I, I just got to tell you, I don't know if it's even a question, but um. How do you do it? <laughs> I guess it's such a silly question in a way, but it, it, I, I can't, I, I can't do it yet. And and I guess when I read Kathy's book, it was an opening for me to feel. And then I heard your poems, and I got to admit, I love myself so quest. <laughs> so I, you know, so I was totally my head exploded when I found out that your son. Who your son was, because I've always wanted to take your class on do on um the poetry, and everyone's like, "Oh, you got to take Cheryl's class." <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I have to ask, where I guess where do you go spiritually to allow yourself to put that on paper? Because you can see I'm I'm a clip. So talk amongst yourselves now. <laughs> uh, well, I I want to say. Don't think of it as a book. Don't think of it as a book that you're doing. Just think of it as letters that you're writing to your heart, to God, to the universe. Just write to yourself to, you know, get a special journal. And actually it's journal writing. It begins that way. And then it morphs into its own thing. But the the point is not to control it. And if you tell yourself no one ever has to see this, then that's fine. I did, this did not start as a book. It started as my survival because I really did not think that I wanted to be here. I remember one morning I got up and I went into the bathroom for something and I looked in the mirror and I said, why am I here without Malik? Mm -hmm. I made it through the loss of my mother and mm -hmm. my best friend in the same week, but I can't do this without Malik. And I immediately told my daughter-in-law and my partner that I was feeling that way. And so I knew that I needed to go to therapy. I was just holding off and saying, oh, I'm going to go deep in. I work this myself. It can't. I could not. I'm sure many, many people do, but I could not. And, you know, being, I, I've been a social worker and a therapist for a long time. So I knew that that was helpful. And so going to therapy helped to break me open and to share and to let out that whoosh of feelings and fear and sadness. And my journal, my journal really saved my life. Mm. It was as I was going along, one of the things I wanted people to know who Malik was, you know, his fans knew Fife Dog and, you know, the world over knew Fife Dog, but I wanted people to know how does a little boy, little precocious Caribbean boy go from <laughs> a big mouth telling everything to a man that changes the world with his music. Incredible. That was important for me. And so I, I started there. Don't pick a place, just go. And whatever comes out, let it come. 
Oh, great. Now, I just want to show you some advice I could give you. I think you and Kathy will appreciate this. I just want to grab a book I got for my birthday. You're saying a new journal. I got a new journal. And I just. <laughs> <laughs> And I, oh, I know you can hear me. I just want you to see the title of this journal because I know the two of you and some others there will appreciate it. <laughs> okay, okay. You've got your message right there. Love it, love it, Laura. <laughs> Good girl. Fill that book up. Fill that book up. And, you know, I only want to say one other thing, Laura, is that sometimes, some days, just one line will come out or two or just cuss, <laughs> which and I had my experience with that. I was so angry. All I did was say F, F word a hundred <laughs> times until something else started coming out. So just be, just be prepared, you know, to go for a long time, but share your heart. Okay. And I would say, Cheryl, you helped me. You always help me because because you always say, just go there, go for, go deeper, don't don't stop yourself. And Alicia Ostriker always used to say, kill the censor, <laughs> go to the place of fear. And I I think um, that's what you do when you, as as Cheryl said, when you aren't thinking about who's list, who's going to read it or. But Cheryl, you've always you've helped me, so I think it's it's good to have somebody or somebodies who will kind of encourage you to to do that. But I think there comes a time when you don't have a choice. Perhaps at least that's how it was with me. I didn't have a choice. I actually didn't plan to write the brother poems. I had no intention of writing them. They wrote me. Um, mm. Uh, and I just had to go for the ride, you know, so to speak. But um, you know, you you have you have us. I'm so glad <laughs> you have a writing community, and that's that's yeah. wonderful. One other thing that Audrey Lord always said, she said, just when it starts to get too hard, that's when you have to keep going. Tears falling down. Keep going. Make yourself that promise. I'll make it right here so everyone's witness. That's great. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. <laughs> On your birthday. <laughs> On my birthday, yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a nice birthday gift. Amazing. Yes. It's amazing. Thank, thank you. Thank you all. Um, Salim, you have. You have the stage. Oops. Okay. So, um, wow. Uh, you may have answered my question. Kathy and Cheryl may have answered my question, but the, the interesting theme is that's coming these May birthdays. My mother and father were both born on May 10th. They were both born on the same day. Oh, wow. Very, very interesting. So talk about bulls bumping heads. <laughs> yeah, they didn't stay together too long. Um, so <laughs> but anyway, I mean, my question was actually about the collaboration between the two of you, because I think that that's what actually makes things greater. And I didn't know if one of you was the one that was actually the dart and the other one was actually the target. And I just wanted to hear you talk a little bit about more, a little bit more about how you collaborate. I'll let you speak, Kathy, because I think it, it interchanges. <laughs> it interchanges. Okay. We change roles all the time. Um, I love that question. Um, well, it's, it's funny because what I wanted to say before, and uh, I see that my mom, by the way, who is 96, is here. So I just want to say thank you, Mom, for being here and happy Mother's Day. Um, and I feel uh, connected to your mom, Cheryl. Uh, and I want to thank Alma for giving us you. Thank so, you. Um, what I want to say may sound uh, like a diversion, but I, it's, I don't think it is. Being here today and the way that we're 
um, weaving and connecting and sharing. Uh, it's, it's kind of a way of being. And uh, I was thinking earlier uh, about Though, you know, the many times that Cheryl and I have talked about our lives and how my daughters, Ella and Jaja, who are here, uh, grew up knowing Cheryl and how uh, we, we, one's poems and one's work in the world, right? And, and one's familying is all, at least for us, it's all connected. So, uh, the the guidance and advice and support for hard decisions for parenting for job choices uh, aren't separate from like what if that line may not work or you know can you find a stronger word there <laughs> you know they they become for us that's how I feel anyway and it's you know it it's it's a kind of love and um, faith and trust that is built over years and and yeah, uh, all that stuff at no no host star and also like tears and what do I do now uh, and uh, how do we build community in this racist, sexist, capitalist monstrous reality and how do we find beauty always and that's one of the things too Cheryl was visiting once and we were sitting outside and she described a uh, hibiscus that was there and I said oh you just showed me what a hibiscus is I've been living <laughs> with hibiscus she said that's what we do Kathy that's what poets do and I said oh okay okay <laughs> I'm gonna try that but I think you know um it's that, it's all, as, as my, my friend Alexis DeVoe always says, it's D, all of the above. So I, I don't know, Cheryl, you, you take it from that wandering. Yeah, I want to also say that it's acceptance, accepting the other's quirkiness, the other's wonder without criticizing or, I mean, I, I feel like, I always have um, Kathy's shoulder or back to fall back on when things get too hard without feeling um, impo like I'm imposing. You know, she's always, if she knows I'm going through a hard time or even when I'm not, she always makes her home available for me to just come out and leave the city and write. And we do that quite a bit. We write and talk and we exchange, and I'll get an attitude if we are not right. Because <laughs> I don't only want to talk or go to the beach, I want us to write, you know. But of course, we get into all that chatting, and then I'm like, I'm here for the weekend to write. So it, you know, like we take turns pushing the other in terms of writing, in terms of being brave, in terms of seeing the world in a different way. And I feel like that's really important. It's important for me to have that community. No one, you know, writing is very lonely, but you don't have to make it that way. You can have, even if it's one person, and Kathy and I have always read each other's work, made comments and suggestions and pushed each other to send this to this place or send it there or let this person read it. So, you know, it really, really is that full sisterhood and sisterly support and without judgments. And I also um, admire Kathy for as long as she's been working for freedom and the rights of humans, that goes a long way for me. You know, I see her heart. I see the work that she has put put into helping us to be a better society. And I, I rather choose my friends that way, the ones that are working towards our freedom and our liberation. Okay, thank, thank you both. Thank you. It was a great reading. Thank you.
Yeah, it's great to hear you talk about sisterhood. Thank you for, for bringing that into the room. Yeah, yeah. So any other questions or, or comments for our, our poets? Can I just say that you and Marianne rock? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is home. This place is home. Beautiful. Everybody's welcome. Beautiful. <laughs> We're grateful that you're here. Yeah. I can't wait till we can visit again. <laughs> yes.